Both young men and maidens, alleluia, old men and children. His glory is above the earth and heaven, alleluia, and he has exalted the horn of his people. Ooh, <laughs> Joyful in glory, alleluia, let them sing aloud on their vengeance. I execute vengeance on the nations, alleluia, punishments on the people. Judgment, Alleluia, to them all to the Alleluia. Praise him with salt to me and a harp, Alleluia. Is mo wer of gena han kim kim nim han chorus, Alleluia. Praise him with strings and organs, Alleluia. Is mo wer of gena han kim valor in his it with me, Alleluia. Praise him and on the symbols of joy, Alleluia. Even Maru is Mutiru, Ephraim, she's been no Tanlido, yeah. Looks at Rati, Kayo, Kayo, Marty, and Leo, yeah. Can in Kayo, Kestos, Eo, Nasto, Neo, non, I mean, Alleyo, Alleluia, Alleluia, Biofa, Benoti, Be, Alleluia. Vonni, Vene, Benos, Nem, Naival, in Bait, with Noti, Ben, Voices. And go and all greetings. For she is exalted above the cherubim, the flower of incense, the daughter of Joachim. Truly you are worthy of, of blessings, O mother of the Messiah, Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> Jesus, 
que pôs em besto e não fibro e em cor, em chit fez os bebem nem mi, em ash es ne o unif. Sanctuary. Christ, 
Sokta di mecho is nemtik so siya, bajo is so sari, o is in a roy, yo se mok banu de serik soti, emoi bajo is isos bejeristos, ari o is in a roy. Bless your name, my Lord Jesus Christ. Help me. Matas to me, who saw wood in Manu V. Bashoisiso Sari, Voy, Sinero, Nano me a tiro, Sari, Voy, Sinero. Praise you with your good Father and the Holy Spirit. 
for you have arisen and saved us both. <laughs> Thousands of angels and archangels You are brighter than the sun and more sparkling than the cherubim. Your glory, O Mary, is higher than heaven. You are more honored than the earth and its inhabitants. You are clothed with joy and gladness and girdled with power, O daughter of Zion. And restored him to paradise, the place of joy and the dwelling of the righteous. Undefiled, dark, overlaid, round about with gold, and the mercy seat of the cherubim. القس الذهبي المخفي فيه المن هو ذا كلمة الأب أتسلم منك. Golden lampstand carrying the true light who is the unapproachable light of the world. المجمر الذهبي الحامل جمر النار والبخور المختار العنباري. The rod of Aaron that blossomed and the holy flower of incense. من هذه جامعة ما عن تدلنا على ولدك العجيبة يا مريم العذراء. القم بالأولى التي صنع موسى موضع مغفرة خطايا بن إسرائيل. إمكان في القم بتبود مصبح بالذهب من داخل ومن خارج. The mercy seat in the tabernacle and the golden cherubim overshadowed it. كان في القبة قيس تنزهبي وكيل المن مخفي في. There was a golden lampstand in the tabernacle and the seven lamps. إن كان في القبة مجمر من ذهب والود المختار في وسطها. كان في القبة عصار نزيه التي أزارت بغير غرس ولا صاق. كان في القبة رئيس كان يصعد الزبح عن خطايا الشعب. من قبل مريم ابنة يواقم عرفنا زبيح الحقيقية في الخطايا can speak of the honor of the tabernacle which was decorated by the prophet. They thought with their enlightened minds and explained it through the holy book. القبة الحقيقية التي رب الجنود. They liken the ark to the virgin and it shows in gold to her purity. شبه الغطاء بالعذراء وقرب المجد ظل عليها. They liken the golden pot to the virgin and the measure of the manna. 
شبهوا المنارة الذهبية بالكنيسة وسرور السبع بالسبع طغمات شبهوا زهرة البخور بمريم الملكة وبخورها المختار ببات شبهوا المعدة الذهبية بالمسبح وخبز التقديم بجسد الرب هذا الذي أصعد ذاته ذبيحة مقبول على الصالح خلاص جنسنا فتح باب الفردوس ورد آدم إلى يسدي مرة أخرى ونحن أيضا نطلب أن نفوز برحمة بشفاعات يحب البشر زرت قوتك في الشعوب وخلصت شعبك بذراعك ونعمت علينا مرة أخرى بالحرية كي لا صالح لنفهم وخلصتنا ظهر لمريم المجدلية وخطبك قائلا فجاءت مريم إلى التلاميذ وقالت إن الراتر بي وأنا قال في أحد السبوت أتت إلى القبر طالبة باكتئاب قيامة الرب قطرات المطر محصى عند الجامع ورمل البحر كائن أمام عينك خطايا لسنة يا ربي لا تذكرها ولا تحسب أسامي ردنا يا الله إلى خلاصك وعملنا كصلاحك ترحم علينا كلنا يا رب لا مخلصنا ورحمنا كعظيم رحمتك Christ our master be among us.
us and proclaim and say, Salami ana atikum, Salama bi ana atrukum akum. O King of peace, grant us your peace, establish for us your peace and forgive us. فرق أعداء الكنيسة وحصنا فلا تتزعزع إلى الأبد ليباركنا كلنا ويطهر قلوبنا ويشفي أمران بوسنا وأكسدنا آمين is my Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I like to read some verses from Psalm 87. His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. Alleluia. I like to wish you all a very blessed and happy fast of St. Mary. And during this fast, we need to reflect on her virtues. Especially as we read in Psalm 87, it's written, Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. City of God can refer to the church or can refer to uh, Saint Mary, Mother of God, or also can refer to the human soul, the bride of Christ. And indeed, speaking of Saint Mary, this verse actually was mentioned several times in uh, Sunday Theotokia. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. So one of the very prominent virtues of St. Mary that she lived her life as a servant. She lived her life as a servant. And when I speak about as a servant, there are two types of services. One type to be called to a certain mission or a certain service. Like how God called the apostles or how the clergy are called to their offices. But I'm not speaking about this type of service. I'm speaking about how as a Christian you should have this stat status of serving other. You are a servant. Every Christian should be a servant. Like our Lord Jesus Christ, who did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. As you know, the religious leaders of Israel were against the Lord Jesus Christ. So they did not appoint him in one of the services or ministries of the temple. But this did not prevent the Lord Jesus Christ from serving. He was wandering from place to place to serve others. And in the same way as a Christian, you should have this spirit of service. Whether you are called to be a Sunday school servant or not, whether you are called to be a deacon or not, whether you are called to be a board member or not, whether you are appointed in certain ministry or service in the church or not, you need to have this spirit of service wherever you go and all the time. Wherever you go and all the time. Every Christian should be a servant like our master, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a beautiful saying by John Chrysostom. He said, if you tell me that sun does not give light, I may believe you. But if you tell me if there is a Christian who is not serving, I will not believe you. If you tell me that the sun does not give light, I may believe you. But if you tell me that there is a true Christian who is not serving, I'm not going to believe you. Service means you put yourself for others. And you put others before yourself. You are here actually to 
help one another. As Saint Peter said in First Peter chapter four and verse ten, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. Minister it means serve one another with your gift, as good steward of the manifold grace of God. This morning we heard the parable about the vine dressers. And we mentioned this morning that the church is reminding you that you received the talents, that you received gifts from God. And with these gifts, you need to serve others. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. Serve one another by this gift as a good steward of the manifold grace of God. So let's reflect on the life of St. Mary from her infancy, from her childhood. As you know, her parents presented her to the temple to serve in the temple. And I want to explain to you what does it mean to serve in the temple. Maybe when I say serve in the temple, you think like our church is right now, clean, neat, organize it. So just to serve in the temple and to take care, maybe just to clean it and, and that's it. But no. As you know, in the Jewish temple, there were sacrifices that are offered almost 24 hours every day. And with these sacrifices, uh, there is blood shed. There is a remnant of sacrifices. The ashes that uh, collected after they burned the sacrifices. And who was cleaning the blood? Who was cleaning after the, to, to remove the remnant of the sacrifices? Who is removing the ashes, etc., etc.? It was these little girls that were vowed and presented to serve in the temple. And St. Mary, all the day, she was serving in the temple, cleaning, organizing it, keeping it uh, neat. Not only that, but we know also from her life that she was helping the poor with her food. As you know, St. Mary was a poor girl. She did not have money. But when people came to the temple to offer sacrifices, she was able to tell who is wealthy and who is poor from the type of sacrifices. For example, if a person is offering bull or offering uh, lamb, means they are wealthy. But if some people just offer uh, pigeons or just flour, they are poor. And she used actually to give f her food to the poor. Nobody asked her to do this. But the spirit of service, the spirit of service. Maybe when I said she was cleaning the temple, Maybe you, told, you will tell me that the priests asked her to do this. But no one asked her to go and serve the poor. Also, in the temple, she was praising God. She learned it from uh, Hannah the prophetess, who was living also in the temple, praising God. And St. Mary definitely learned it from her how to praise the Lord. And yes, praising the Lord is a ministry, is a service. Service offered to God. That's how the Sherubim and Seraphim serve the Lord, by praising and glorifying Him. The word deacon means servant. And one of the uh, services of the deacons is to praise the Lord, like the Psalter, the chanter. 
through from her childhood she was serving so service is a state of giving because of a loving heart as we read in John 3:16 for God so loved the world that he gave his son so service is motivated by love saint mary loved god and loved others that's why she was serving each one of us wherever we go and at any time if we have this love of god in our hearts we will be serving naturally we will be serving we will not be waiting for somebody to tell me go and do this service if I need somebody, if I see somebody needs a help, I will do it by myself. If I hear about a person who is sick or a person uh, who has any type of support, emotional support, any type of support, I will go and encourage this person. That's why I'm telling you service is not just to be appointed as a servant, but it's a condition, it's a state, it's a spirit of serving others. Uh, as a Christian, you should feel all the time that you are a servant like the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, when St. Mary reached the age of 13 and she cannot stay in the temple at that age and they betrothed her to Saint Joseph all of us we think that she would put betrothed to Saint Joseph so Joseph will take care of her and this is right but this is not the whole story at that time Joseph was almost in 70s and St. Mary was 13 or 14. So she was serving him because he was an old man, needs somebody to help him and to serve him. And she lived with him in obedience, serving him as a daughter, serving her father. The essence of any service that you are willing to give yourself to others. The people who are selfish, or as they call them, egocentric, they don't have the spirit of service. They want others to serve them. They demand others to serve them. But a true Christian in his life, he is not egocentric. He is Christ-centric and also children of God-centric. So he is about others, not about himself. Saint Mary was serving with joy, not with complaining or grumbling. As the, Lord, as the, the Saint Paul said, God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, she was serving without expecting anything in return. And as you know, the Lord Jesus Christ told us, if you want to be great, be a servant of all and be the last of all. So service is the way to true greatness. Some of us, we think to be great means... Uh, to be popular, or to have a prestige, or people serve me. This is greatness according to the world. But according to God, greatness when you serve others, when you are the servant of all. As the Lord told them, you call me master and teacher, and this is true, but I washed your feet, and I want you to go and wash the feet 
of one another. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 15, St. Paul says, And I will very gladly spend and be spent for your souls. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I am loved. Think about this verse. St. Paul, because he was a true servant, he was willing actually to spend, spend from his money, spend from his time for others. As he said, my needs and the needs of others, I served them with these two hands. He did not demand, although he explained in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, how it is his right to eat from the altar, but he did not use this right. And he served others. Not only he spent, but he said, and I am spent for your souls. Means even I am dying every day to serve your souls. My life is spent for your salvation, to help you. And how he was doing this, he said, very gladly, and I will very gladly spend and be spent for your souls. Maybe he is doing this with his friends, with people who love him and admire him. No. He said, though, the more abundantly I love you, the less I am loved. Can you imagine? He is offering this love abundantly and gladly. He is serving others. He is spending and he is spent for their sakes. And the more he is doing this, he was loved less. But did this stop him from serving them? No, not at all. Going back to St. Mary, after she was betrothed to St. Joseph, Archangel Gabriel announced to her the good news that she will be the mother of God. And St. Mary yielded and submitted in humbleness, and she said, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. And by doing this, she served the whole humanity. The whole humanity. How come? Some people, when we read in the Tasbihah, Midnight Praises, some verses like uh, salvation of our father Adam, then they say, how we call St. Mary is the salvation of our father Adam. Let me explain this. God will not impose himself on us. So when he sent Archangel Gabriel to Saint Mary to ask her to, to accept to be the mother of God, let me just assume theoretically, in, if she said no, and no other woman, woman accepted this, Yes, God will find other way to save us. But what I'm trying to say, by her submission, by accepting to be the mother of God, so God is offering us the gift of salvation. So Saint Mary, as a representative of all humanity, she accepted this gift of salvation. That's why we call her the salvation of our father Adam. Not because she saved us like the Lord Jesus Christ by his blood. No, definitely not. But by accepting this gift. Let me imagine there is a poor family and somebody wants to give them money. But the head of the family, the father here, refused to take the money. Then the, this family will continue to be poor. But if they accepted the gift of money, then he and his children will live uh, in, in abundance. In the same way, St. Mary, by accepting 
the free gift of salvation, she actually served the whole humanity. She opened the door of salvation for us once again. So by accepting to be the mother of God, she served the whole humanity. And as the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, she nursed him, she took care of him, she fed him. She did what any mother does to her children. And in, uh, I think in Friday Theotokia, we reflect on how St. Mary, she took care of her child, Jesus. We said that he hold your breasts and you fed him with milk, you know. She served him honestly and faithfully, genuinely, as a true mother. And I want to say that God the Father entrusted St. Mary to serve his son in his incarnation because of her faithfulness in serving others. If St. Mary was not faithful in serving others, how God would entrust her to serve his son in his incarnation? That's why we say the father looked from heaven and saw no one like, like you. He sent his son and was incarnate of you. Even when Archangel Gabriel just told her, by, for your information, by the way, Elizabeth, your servant, is also pregnant. And this is the sixth month of uh, Elizabeth. Just he did not tell her, go and serve her, nothing. He just gave her a piece of information. But as I told you, service is a spirit. You don't need somebody to tell you, go and do this. If you have the spirit of service, you will be serving without anybody asking you to do something in particular. St. Mary actually felt she should go and serve this old lady, Elizabeth. And the trip was very difficult, by the way. If you know the geography of Israel, in the north, Nazareth and Galilee. Then in the middle, Samaria, and in the south, you will find Judea. And St. Mary was in Nazareth, in the very north. And she traveled all the way from Galilee, from Nazareth of Galilee, all the way to the south. At, the time, at our time now, there are paved roads, and, but during that time, there was no paved road. She has to go through the mountains. And she went in a very difficult trip. Nobody asked her to do this, but the spirit of her, of the service in her, made her travel all the way from Nazareth of Galilee, all the way to uh, Judea, where Elizabeth and Zacharias were living. Uh, and she stayed with her. Yani, most uh, women know that the first trimester, th three months of pregnancy, uh, they feel nausea, they feel it's not an easy, but she traveled although she was in the first three months of her pregnancy. And she went and served uh, Elizabeth faithfully for three months. And at the time of the birth of John the Baptist, when many other uh, women came to serve Elizabeth and to be with her, she went back. She served when there, there was no one to serve this old lady and she served it in secret, 
because she is not seeking praise from men. She is not seeking people to praise her. She is doing this because of the love of God and the love of the other. After this, in her journey to Egypt with Joseph and uh, baby Jesus, you know, Joseph was a very poor man, and he was a carpenter. So he did not have a monthly salary, a monthly income. And can you imagine in these three years and a half in the journey to Egypt, definitely he did not work as a carpenter. So how he can spend from where he was able to su support this family traveling from one place to another place to another place. They say when the wise men give them gold, so this gold helped them to support them during this journey. But we know that St. Mary, during this journey also, she was serving any person in need. She did not think that the gold we have is almost gone. How can we support ourselves until we go back to uh, Egypt, uh, to, to Israel? She did not think this way, but she felt that it is his, her responsibility to serve any person around her, trusting that God will take care of her. That's the spirit of service. When we have this spirit, we will serve others, not thinking about what we have or what we don't. Like this widow who put the two mites in, in the donation box, and this was all what she had. Like the widow at Serfet Saida, when she served Elijah with making baking cake for him first, before, during the time of famine, before herself and her son, but that's the spirit of service, giving, giving because of the love of God. Uh, also, she was very poor, but as St. Paul said, we are poor, but we can enrich others. She was poor, but what is the definition of a poor person? Uh, the poor person is not the one who does not have money, but is the one who always, always feel, feels that he needs. That is the definition of a poor person. And what's the definition of a rich person? The rich person is not the person who has a lot of money, but the rich person is the person who is content. So. A content person is rich because he doesn't need anything. But a person who usually in need and demanding, even if he has a lot, that is a, a poor person. When she returned back, she actually took care of the Lord Jesus Christ while he was growing. And all of us, we know the story when the Lord was in the temple at 12 years old. And how when she returned back and found him in the temple, she was moved with compassion. She was anxious about her son. And she was looking uh, for him every place. She was a careful mother who took good care of her son, Jesus, while he was growing. Definitely she was praying for him, fasting for him. Uh, that's what she can do and what she, she learned to do. Then when the Lord started his ministry, and he started his ministry by a miracle uh, of attending the wedding at Cana of Galilee, and St. Mary was there. And there was a problem. What the problem? 
they ran out of wine. And again, no one asked her to do anything. But because of the spirit of service, she went to her son, trusting that he can solve the problem. And she went to him and told him they don't have any more wine. And the Lord actually submitted to her. And he made the miracle of transforming water into wine to solve this problem. One of the titles of St. Mary, we say about her, she is trusted advocate for mankind. Trusted advocate for mankind. You know why the church called her trusted advocate for mankind? Because St. Mary intercedes on our behalf, even when we don't ask her. Like in the wedding of Cana of Galilee, no one asked her to inter intervene. So the church said St. Mary is the trusted advocate of mankind. Even without asking her, she made a, a, a plea with her son to solve this problem. St. Mary definitely found many obstacles in serving others. As I told you, she was poor, so she did not have enough resources to help others by money. The, the journey from uh, Nazareth to Judea, as I explained to you, it was a very difficult journey, but this was not an obstacle for her. So the spirit of service overcome any obstacle or any challenge. Sometimes when there is opportunity to serve others and we find any obstacle, we say, I, I cannot serve him. I cannot serve others. I cannot help others because of all these obstacles. But a true servant, through the grace of God, will overcome any obstacle and any challenge because the goal is to serve others. St. Mary was serving, as I told you, in humbleness, in secrecy, and that's why she received the greatest blessing to be the mother of God. The more we serve others in humbleness, with love, and in secret, the more we will be blessed. As St. Paul said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And to give is not about giving money. By the way, giving money is the easiest thing to do. But to go and comfort people and listen to them and to support them and to encourage them, this needs a loving spirit. It's very easy, actually, if I hear about a poor family, I say, how much does he need? Oh, here is one thousand dollars. That's very easy to be done. But the more challenge is to be with them, to comfort them, to ask about them, to help them, to support them. And no one will be able to do this if he is self-centered, egocentric. So service, serv service needs selflessness to needs denial of oneself <coughs> to deny one's self when we deny ourselves we can look and focus on our mission in life our purpose in life but as long as we are looking for ourselves it will be difficult to look at uh, the, our mission, our purpose in life. Then actually, after the time of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ and all the humiliation he endured and St. Mary as his mother, definitely with every humiliation he endured, this was a sword piercing in her heart. 
But she endured all of this because she knows that he came for this purpose. He came to save the world. So by accepting and enduring to see her son humiliated like this, actually she is serving the world. And the top humiliation happened in the cross. And then Mary walked with him step by step. And as we say in the ninth hour litanies, when St. Mary saw the Lamb of God on the cross, she said, the world will rejoice because they receive salvation. But my heart is torn when I see your suffering, my son and my God. But she endured all of this because she knows he came for this purpose, the purpose of saving the world. His name will be Jesus, which means he will save the world. Peter could not endure this. And he said to the Lord, far be it from you to be crucified. And the Lord knew that it was not Peter, it was Satan speaking on his mouth. But St. Mary never ever said to him, don't do this because of the spirit of service. Maybe some of our families, parents or spouses or children, when they see a, a servant or a spouse or a clergyman uh, putting a lot of time and effort in service, they will tell him, just calm down, take care of yourself, take care of your health. Don't overdo it. But St. Mary never said this to the Lord Jesus Christ. As a mother, she never told him, just rest. There is no need to travel from place to place. There is no need to endure this humiliation from the people. But she was encouraging and supporting him. Spirit of service. And the fathers told us, although she went with the Lord to the cross, but she did not go to the tomb on Sunday because she trusted that her son will rise again, as he said, on the third day he will rise again. She has no doubt that the Lord will rise again. But as a mother to the apostles, she, she, she was with them in the upper room, as we, we know from Acts chapter 1. She was supporting them. She was encouraging them. Because since the cross, when the Lord said to her, John is your son, and said to John, she is your mother. But at this, from this time, she was with the apostles, supporting, encouraging, praying for them. And we know how she saved Matthias, Matthias when he was in prison. And actually, all the iron in this city was melt. And she actually delivered him from prison. And through her prayer, the whole city became Christian. And Matthias the apostle baptized them. Uh, and when she lived with John the Beloved, the church history says that she was serving the young virgins and teaching them spirituality, not by her words, but by her example. Because St. Mary, her words are very, very limited. She didn't speak a lot, but she did a lot by her spirit. Maybe the only apostle who was able to get some words from her uh, was St. Luke. St. Luke actually uh, asked her to give him details about the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why St. Luke was able 
to write to us some details about the annunciation of John the Baptist, of Zacharias by the birth of John the Baptist, the annunciation of St. Mary, the birth of John the Baptist, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, with some details not mentioned in any other gospel. St. Mary continued to, to serve until she departed. But after her departure, she did not stop serving others. But until now, she is interceding on our behalf. And in, in many times, she appeared and she gave message of encouragement, message of hope, message of support, also message of warning to warn us that we should be ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And many miracles she performed. And as I told you, she had the spirit of service. She did not serve only the believers, but many miracles actually she performed with non-believers to teach us that when we serve, we should not differentiate between a believer and non-believer. We should actually be willing and ready to serve everyone. As I told you, service needs a loving heart, but service also needs a merciful heart. A merciful heart. And when Pope Theophilus read about the flight to Egypt uh, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, he wanted to know more details about this flight because nothing was recorded. So he prayed and prayed and asked St. Mary to tell him the details about this trip. They stayed three years and a half in Egypt. And St. Mary, as a loving mother and a merciful mother, appeared to Pope Theophilus and explained to him the details of the trip of the Holy Family to Egypt. So, and, and St. Mary until now, she is serving us by her prayers. That's why we tell her in the Agbeya, you are the rampart of our salvation. Rampart like the fence that protecting our salvation by her prayers, by her intercession of, for us. And in, uh, in all our prayers, we say, intercede on our behalf before your beloved son that he may forgive us our sins. Since their service does not stop by their departure to heaven, but God sent them, give them mission, and by their prayers also. So not only they are praying, but God sent them in a mission to help people who are in earth. St. Paul spoke about this in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. He said, since we have this cloud of witnesses surrounding us, we need actually to fight the good fight with patience, with endurance, as because this cloud of sins are supporting us, serving us, and praying for us. So here, while we are fasting this fast of St. Mary, what's your service? Are you waiting until they assign you a service in the church? Are you waiting to get this title, a Sunday school servant, or a board servant, or a deacon? Actually, you should be a servant in every moment in your life, in every place you go. Encourage people, listen to them, comfort them, pray for them. Lead them to repentance. One person told me one time, I felt that I am moved by my heart to pray for the special needs. 
and he dedicated one year in his life just to pray for the children with special needs constantly. Although he doesn't have a special needs son or daughter, but that's the spirit of service. The Holy Spirit moved his heart. That's why he dedicated a year in every prayer, morning and night, and in the middle of the day, he is praying. What's your service? Do you love the temple of God, the church? What's your service here? Again, don't wait. If you come to the church and you find area needs to be cleaned, area needs to be uh, rearranged, go do it by yourself. Don't wait. And as I told you, praising God is a service. Do you love to come to the church to praise the Lord and to participate in praising God? Sometimes we feel that praises is the, the job of the deacons. And not only all the deacons, but those who know the hymns. Every one of the church should be praising the Lord. If you see somebody is drifting away from faith, now we are surrounded with atheism, sexual immorality. Don't just say people around us are drifting away. Maybe God made you hear about this person to show him love, to show him acceptance, and to bring him back to the church. If you don't know how to defend your faith, at least pray for them. If there are senior citizens in your area and they need service, go check on them. Ask what they need. Maybe they need to go shopping. If you have time, go. Take them to do shopping. Actually, you will bring joy to their hearts when they see you asking about them. If you hear about somebody who is sick, go and ask about him. Visit him in the hospital. Don't wait until you are assigned a certain service in the church. You have a mission. You're created for a purpose. The Lord Jesus Christ in John 17, at the end of his life on earth, he said, the work you have given me, I have accomplished it. I glorified you on earth. Do you glorify God? Did you accomplish the service that God gave you? Each one of us has received a gift. Each one of us. And as I said, this gift is to minister to one another, to help one another. What is your gift? What's your talent? And maybe your talent, you can help some students in, in their studies, can help them in science, in math, in history, in geography. Maybe that's your talent. Go and use your gift to serve others. In the book of Revelation, we read, and their works will follow them. What you, you were doing will follow you. So, do you have a list of good works that will follow you? Or God will look at your life and he doesn't, he, he, he finds you living a very selfish life, self-centered. All what you are doing just for yourself. And that's it. Nothing for others. Nothing for others. In, John, sorry, in Matthew 25, the Lord said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was in prison and you asked about me. This spirit of service, this actually, these works that will go with you to heaven. Believe me, the value of your life is measured by how much you serve with others. Not by how much you accomplish for yourself. The value. 
of your life will be measured by how much you serve others, not by how much you accomplished for yourself. Whatever you accomplish, whether money, whether prestige, whether profession, whether career, whatever, one day we will leave all of these things and will die. But your service to others will remain after we depart from the world. Let's pray and ask God as he helped St. Mary to be a faithful servant and he granted her the spirit of service or her life. Let us actually ask God to give us this spirit of service because this is the road to true greatness. If anyone wants to be great, let him be servant of all and last of all. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Any comments or questions? Christos Benoti, O King of Peace, grant us your peace, establish for us your peace, forgive us our sins. For yours is the power, glory, blessing, and majesty forever. Amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for then the kingdom, the power, and the glory for him. Now, love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior Jesus Christ, communion gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. I like to remind you tomorrow night we have a revival